Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Fairground Fridays where today we're going to do something new and, well, fix something old. Now this is the moment when I'm sure you're screaming at the screen of your mobile device or whatever else you're watching this video on. Hold on Robin, I thought we were already integrating all these rides into Brick Nottingham, not making more and changing them. Well, yeah, you're technically right. I had started on that, but uh, I needed three things to uh, continue with the uh, foundation work of the fairground itself. Uh, one was the cheap bricks that I'd bought uh, last time, uh, mid-video really. Uh, they have arrived, but I haven't cleaned them <laughs> because I haven't had enough time this week. Uh, the second one is enough time to do a long video like that with a really long session. I'm not sure I've got that either. And the third, which we can definitely blame the Lego group for, is the fact that the base plates haven't arrived. So I've only got a certain amount I could do anyway. So when I've got all three of those in place, I will continue with the uh, fairground foundations. But until then, well, I needed to do this at some point, so we're doing it first. Uh, so there's two things today. One is a recolor of our chair ride, which I'll probably do second because I've bought all the parts for that to make it a lot better. There was a lot of sort of uh, comments about the video tiles on the top of this and so on. So we'll do that later. Uh, and the first one was, well, using this sticker and this sticker, which both came from the set 41127 Amusement Park Arcade from 2016. And that, as you can probably tell, is a friend set. And a part of that friend set was the kind of, well, splatter frog type game. A uh, <laughs> bit of a cruel idea in a way. Uh, but obviously you had to sort of whack a uh, frog, much like the whack-a-mole game, which is a lot more uh, common in real life, uh, to score points on this scoreboard. Uh, and this was part of the sign for that game. And I really liked these stickers and I thought they were really bright and colourful. And I definitely wanted to incorporate them into a game either in my arcade, uh, the current one being full, but uh, an extended one in the future. Or maybe a big sort of 3D game that's motorised for my 100% motorised fairground. So I kind of started thinking about how I could do that. And I remembered that somebody had already done a fantastic whack-a-mole game already. And that was my friend, Liam, also known as Lego Paradise, who has his own YouTube channel, way bigger than mine, <laughs> with 80,000 subscribers plus and counting. Uh, he's a very good uh, builder of Lego, doing loads of creative stuff, uh, usually sort of motorized or mechanized or something like that. And he's done lots of Lego idea submissions that have been very successful. So I'd definitely check him out if you haven't already. So I realized there's no real point in reinventing the wheel when somebody had done such a marvelous job before. So I decided to use his build as inspiration for mine. So what I won't be doing today is showing you exactly how to build his mechanism. I suggest if you want to do that, you uh, check out his video uh, called Whack-A-Mole uh, and see how he did it. Uh, but I did make some changes when I did mine. And here is my basic Whack-A-Mole game or my Whack-A-Frog game, because that's the theme that I'm going for. Uh, and as I say, the mechanism has been completely lifted from Lego Paradise, so that's all in there. And I won't go through how to do that exactly, because you can look at his video. I believe very much in leaving credit where credit is due uh, and letting you uh, watch his channel rather than mine if you want to see how he did it. Uh, but basically, the changes I've made are making kind of a gearing down mechanism on the outside just to slow down the speed of the motor so it goes in at appropriate speed well on full whack on the battery box. Uh, and I've got the added benefit, of course, with my system of being able to put a lot of the depth uh, of this ride under the ground level. Because for those who aren't familiar, I'll say it again, <laughs> I've got a basement layer kind of in my fairground, which means I've got all the workings hidden, that when the normal ground level then continues, we only have a really sort of small element of the working ride without any wires, motors, and the rest of it. So because I'm able to do that, I've been able to make my whack-a-mole or whack-a-frog game a lot smaller. Uh, so I've also decreased the number of uh, frogs <laughs> from five moles to four frogs just to make it a little bit more compact in that other dimension as well. But essentially above ground, it's a very discreet sort of little box with kind of a, a ledge for standing on still and a place for the backboard sign. And you'll see on the inside, I've got these four frogs, three submerged at the moment and one currently up, ready for being thwacked, <laughs> that are on these little stickers that came as part of the 853921 sticker pack. 
Uh, and there's actually two of these frogs in that sticker pack. So if you have two packs like I do, then you're able to do four. And that works really rather well. And I thought you'd probably have a timer on it or something like that. So I've just added this little 1x2 tile, which is part of a few sets way back in the day, uh, including 6456 Mission Control from 1999. So that looks really good as well, I think. Uh, and then I just ran out of one by one tiles, so I put on one of these post-it note ones, but maybe somebody's just written some instructions on it or graffiti or something. I might take that off in due course. So there is the basic ride. Now, obviously we want to incorporate uh, the two sticker pieces I showed earlier. So that's why we've got this bit hanging off the back uh, for the kind of backboard scoreboard which gives it a bit more detail. And that's what you're sort of racking up your points on. Uh, and then I'd continue the sort of purple and yellow coloring by adding a bracket to the top so we can add the Whacker Frog sign on there as well. And that means we've got a complete game. Now, another change I made to uh, Liam's uh, build was the fact that I've put these on one by two curved slopes. And that just means uh, that they're kind of curving away from us a little bit. So when we look at it from this sort of diagonally up angle as very uh, big people <laughs> compared with minifigures, uh, we're able to see the frogs a lot better. When he did it, he used sort of one by two printed tiles with the Ninjago beasties on. Uh, so maybe he couldn't to change what they're on because they're printed, but um, they were sort of looking more uh, laterally at the minifigures. So I think this is a little bit easier for us to see at least and enjoy. Uh, now, these stickers were a little bit wider, so I have actually trimmed them down so they fit as well. Uh, but we can now test the game and set it going on the motor. And you will see it's a wonderful mechanism where we've got two cams basically kind of in anti-phase with little uh, cam uh, bumps. I don't know what you'd call them. <laughs> little bits of cam that hit these little things from the underside all in a sequence and make them sort of pop up. So we've got this very sort of pleasing uh, set of frogs bumping into view, ready to be smashed by the player. And it's got a really nice sort of rickety tickety tock type noise as well, I think. Yeah, that's really good. So you can imagine somebody just standing there playing the game. Uh, so I've got a employee of the fairground, or maybe not when I changed them all over for crooks, uh, just here with a big club <laughs> and I decided rather than using a sort of sponge hammer that we'd have a big sponge uh, <laughs> club that's usually used on the series minifigures uh, cavemen or cyclopses in all sorts of different colors uh, and they would that person playing would stand on the sort of lip there and play and then maybe we'd have a little container to one side with some more sort of <laughs> big sponge uh, clubs for you to choose and that is the finished game. So how about that? I think that looks really fantastic uh, and it's really fun. And look how little uh, amount of space it takes. That is a noisy motor at the moment. I'll see if I can sort that out. Maybe we should turn it off for now. <laughs> but look how small of a space it takes up in my fairgrounds. So I'm hoping that will fit in addition to absolutely everything else that we've done so far. So what a fabulous carnival game. I think you'll agree. I think you can probably see now why when I tried Liam's idea out for myself, there was very little I could really do to improve on it other than uh, recess some of the mechanism and add the scoreboard and stickers that I already had. It's just such a wonderfully elegant and simple solution. Uh, and those who are long-term viewers of the channel will know that my favorite thing is a very elegant and simple solution to a problem. So two thumbs up to Liam and two thumbs up to this ride as well, this uh, carnival game rather. So fantastic. So uh, on from something new to something improved. Uh, and what I want to do is, well, do a bit more of a change to my flying chair ride. Uh, essentially, it's a bit of a mess at the moment because we've got the column all in the colour scheme of the original Friends build. Uh, I've changed all of the chairs to fit minifigures, uh, but basically I've changed the colours to red, yellow and blue, which is kind of a different colour scheme. Uh, and then last time, as well as sort of changing the top to a more clean, in my mind, dark tan colour, I added all of these video tiles around the rim of the outside. Uh, and that wasn't popular at all. <laughs> with you uh, I got a lot of people saying oh no let's get rid of those that looks like an absolute mess so 
I figure uh, I would buy some parts to change the colors up here so they continue the red, yellow and blue type theme and also maybe add more of a sort of old fashioned uh, sort of pattern around the edge with some lighting. Uh, so I'm going to do that and the third thing is, that's rather comical in a way, is that by the time I've changed this column, uh, there'll be absolutely no part, well there'll be a few I suppose, there'll be a few in the structure of the round bit at the top, uh, the sort of uh, banana gears, um, but essentially there'll be no parts from the original set, so it was a bit silly uh, getting it in the first place really, because so little has actually made it through to the final piece. Uh, I've changed every part bit by bit, but you know it was a good learning process and uh, it wasn't that expensive because I managed to get it on its own without the mini dolls and stuff, so yeah it wasn't really that bad. So yeah I'm going to be taking this completely apart uh, and then rebuilding it back the same. So what you need to do is kind of remember it as it currently is. Uh, I suppose I don't really need to get it whirring around because the mechanism is going to be identical, but this is how it currently looks. Oh, going the wrong way. Let's sort that out. There we go. That is how it currently looks with that colour scheme. Uh, and then, well, you'll have to wait to see the new colour scheme. Now, some of you may think it's a shame replacing this purple colour with boring old white, but to me, it's a blessed relief, actually. <laughs> I didn't like this colour right from the outset, so to see the back of it is actually quite good. You never know, I might be able to use that under the sea as some sort of huge trumpet plant or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but even worse than that is this sort of dark pink colour, which I don't like, which is in between, uh, which has this white brick in between it. So I'm going to go to the more boy colours of blue and yellow and well in due course red as well so yeah a bit more boring perhaps but I don't have that many rides in sort of white and uh, uh, so on in the in the fairground so I think it will look a lot better it will definitely look a lot more tied in with the chairs oh yes I much prefer that much better colors and much more in keeping with the chairs yeah I really like that very simple but very pure indeed. So that looks really good. Uh, now it's in keeping, as I say, with the chairs hanging off here. It's in keeping with the sort of button on the top. That bit I think I'm going to keep roughly the same. So it's really just these sort of 4 by 4 setups uh, with all the video tiles on that I need to replace. And I thought I'd do something really kind of traditional in a way, and very simple indeed, and kind of have chasing lights going all around the outside uh, in the three same colours, but obviously in trans as well so basically I can do that and then hopefully it will make a really sort of pleasing sort of look when it's going round and round really quickly I'm hoping uh, and it'll be a bit of a blur for your eye but in a better way than the video <laughs> tiles were so yeah this is going to take ages <laughs> to put these all on but I think the outcome should be worth it so here goes Oh, well that didn't take long and hurt my fingertips. <laughs> anyway, I think although a lot more simple, all these little light bulbs look a lot more kind of traditional and probably realistic for an actual fairground really. So I think I'm much happier with those than the video tiles. Uh, so I should be able to just keep these in order uh, and just place them onto the edge of this. So this is the banana gear I was talking about being uh, the probably only part, as well as these modified plates, I suppose, from the original ride. <laughs> but um, such is the price we pay for getting things exactly how we want them. So do we think that is the right way? Because it's going to be spinning kind of clockwise. So do we want the leading light to kind of be at the top or at the bottom? I think the top looks a bit better. So yeah, I'll continue this. Uh, and then when we've got it all done, it will be spinning around like that and hopefully add a bit more of an effect. Yeah. Okay, so here is our new top. And wow, all the colours really work. And the chasing lights look really quite bright and fun actually. So yeah, I really like that. So I'll bring in the column from before. And then that should just integrate with the bit below. I think that worked. Just have to make sure the chairs are all the right way up. And yep, I think we're ready to go. So here is our new colour scheme first run. And there we go. 
Oh, that looks so much better. <laughs> it's a relief when it works. I really like this, actually. It kind of looks like a bit of a blur, which is kind of how you want it. That's kind of how I thought the video tiles might look, but to be fair, they didn't. And I could crank up the speed when I put it in the final position. And people have mentioned sort of shortening or lengthening the uh, uh, bars that these things are on to get them kicking out a little bit more, or even raising the whole column up a little bit. So... Uh, basically, I can place other rides quite nearby and have them sort of flying above it. And all of those things might work because I think these things in real life do sort of elevate up when they're running and sort of come down a bit to let you on and off. Uh, but that is a much better colour scheme. And let's face it, it's much more tied in now. We've got the red, yellow, blue, the red, yellow, blue and the red, yellow, blue. Yep, it works. So <laughs> that's really good. I'm happy with that. Uh, but do let me know what you think. Good, good. Well, a short one maybe, but an important one nonetheless. This chair ride looks a picture of health in its new colour scheme, in my mind. Looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, and this new Whacker Frog game looks brilliant fun, I think. One of my favourites, I think, already. Uh, the one thing, though, is I'm not entirely sure what the frogs have done to deserve being whacked. I mean, moles might be digging up your lawn or something and you want to whack them, but frogs? I don't know. They seem a bit innocent to me. Uh, but I couldn't really change the theme because I couldn't really change the stickers on the backboard and so on. So anyway, let's have both of these going at once. Oh, that's sort of hitting the other. Let's move them slightly further apart. Yeah, look at that. Just shows this th this uh, fairground's going to be absolutely amazing when it's all together. Very noisy, I'm sure, as well, but very good. Yeah, love it. Absolutely love this one. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I think we should finish off another major project, which is the Flying Knotsman train, by doing the last of those rail carriages. And then we can start some really good new projects. So until then, see you!